Oli Alexander, the official blurb to the album Palo Santo says that it's about what it means to be human. So what does it mean? Mm. Oh, oh, I'll let you know when I figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Give us a guess. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess it's like making mistakes and then um, kind of looking at the mistakes that you've made and trying to understand maybe why you made them and like how you're going to take those lessons into the future. I think that's kind of what I've sort of been mostly thinking about writing the album. Um, yeah. What is Palo Santo? Well, Palo Santo is the name of this um, place that we created, um, this like unique years and years universe called Palo Santo. And um, it's called Palo Santo because, well, it literally translates to holy wood, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, and also it's traditionally this like stick of wood that when you burn it, it uh, gives off this really nice smelling smoke. And it's said to like cleanse your area of evil spirits, which I thought was like a good metaphor for songwriting. So, um, called the album Palo Santo, and then this this sort of uh, kind of fantasy place that we made up, uh, that we set all the music videos from, and that we're kind of telling a story about, and it's this world that's predominantly like ruled by androids, <laughs> <laughs> and um, there are some few humans that remain, and the androids make these humans these like huge celebrities because they um, they want to be more human. They, they're trying to figure out what it means to be human. I mean, that sounds kind of terrifying. Is there a sort of fear of artificial intelligence in there? Is that something you've been thinking about? Well, I'm kind of obsessed with AI and um, sort of how new technology is kind of like changing the way that we view our, our own humanity, you know? And so I'm really just fascinated by, by all the developments that are happening and how it's kind of like becoming this sort of new religion almost, like kind of investing all this stuff into technology is, um, does fascinate me. But you sound kind of reverential about it. I mean, is it something you're obsessed, excited about, or obsessed, concerned about, or is there a bit of both? I think it's probably a bit of both, yeah, because I'm, I'm interested to see um, what's going to happen, you know, and, what, what, and how it will change the way we live our lives and everything, and I think some of it will be great and some of it will probably be not so great, like, um, but we'll just have to wait and see. That's why I think I would actually quite like to be, not that I think cryogenically, being cryogenically mm -hmm. frozen really works, but I would be interested just to try it in case I could like actually pop up in like 300 years time just to see what, what it's like, you know, just for a day. experiment you can repeat, really. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've only got one <laughs> shot at that. And it is a kind of genderless society, isn't it? Um, the society you're depicting. Right. Is that, does that stem from a sort of, is there a conviction that, you know, we're getting more gender fluid in our way? Is that... Well I, well, I thought it would be fun to imagine like what society might be like, you know, like hundreds, thousands of years in the future and say, you know, what if we were replaced by, by AI? And I was imagining like if you're an AI robot, like what would your gender be and what would your, you know, sexuality be? And like if you developed enough of a consciousness, would you not want those, would you not want to fall in love? And would you want to identify as a man or a woman? And I just thought it was like an interesting way to kind of pose the sort of, I guess, the issues surrounding gender and sexuality and identity. So I, I, I yeah, I don't know. I, I sort of hesitate to like comment. That's where we're heading, like a gender-free society. I think that would be quite cool, personally. But um, yeah, because some people, you know, if you look at the debate over self-identification, for example, I mean, the government today um, consulting on making it easier for people to choose the gender identity of their choice. To some people, particularly, you know, some feminists that feels like a, an erosion of rights. Do you yeah. understand those fears or do you think those fears are misplaced? I think they're misplaced. I think what what's so frustrating about the way that this uh, quote unquote debate has been kind of distorted by, I think, you know, the, the press and also just the way it's, the conversation has become about something that I think is actually completely not connected to the to the issue itself. You know, we're not talking about people who want, who, you know, when people say things like, oh, I'll just identify as a helicopter or I'll identify as a unicorn then, you know, if I've got the right to identify as whatever I want. And, you know, and that's like, that's not what it's about at all. We're actually just trying to help people who, to live their best lives, you know, to live the life that they want to. And so I'm just very frustrated that we seem to be like throwing, having an argument over like, whether it's okay to identify as a helicopter or not. It's like, that is not the issue at all. It's really just giving people their basic rights. What about the rights of women, for example, in women-only spaces? Do you, is it important to keep those, do you think? Well, I do believe that trans women are women, so I sort of get confused where those two issues, you know, how, the, how they're supposedly meant to conflict with each other, because I think trans women are women and they need safe spaces too. And, you know, the argument that, oh, well, we have to be, you know, we're, we're scared that some, you know, someone violent will come into our bathroom. It's like that there isn't a magic rule. There's not like some magic force field in front of a bathroom that stops, 
you know, potentially harmful people coming in, like that, that's, you know, that's not what this is about, you know, it's, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I feel like, again, it's an issue that's being distorted and sort of using kind of like fear tactics to just sort of spread misinformation. I do believe women should have women only spaces and should feel protected and safe. And I think, you know, we need to work harder at making that available to women. Um, I think trans women are included in that. So that's really sort of where I stand. The government's um, announced today a 75 point LGBT action plan. Yeah. <laughs> do you think, do you feel that the government's on your side on this? Um, well, I tried reading through the whole 75 points. I actually found it quite hard to find the actual action plan itself. Well, it's um, four and a half million quid for a start. Yeah, I think, so. yeah. I mean, I think it's really good that the government have come forward with a plan. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that. And, you know, you ask any gay person, they'll tell you that it doesn't feel safe to hold hands with their partner in public. Really, I mean, I know that. I'm, Do I'm, you feel I'm a gay too? person. Yeah, of course, yes. Really? So I'm not surprised by the results of this survey, you know? Like, I think it's just highlighting, you know, an issue that's been there for a very, very long time. I mean, I you've been called a trailblazing queer icon by Pink <laughs> News. You're telling me right. that you would be reluctant to hold hands with your partner in public, even you? Yeah, yeah. I know, it's... Fr it's quite it's, a statement. It's, well, I mean how do you undo sort of like decades if not longer of, of, of oppression I suppose and, and discrimination and, and feeling like you aren't uh, it's not comfortable for you to be your authentic self you know or that the wider world doesn't accept you like it's very hard to suddenly you, we aren't going to flip a switch and, and suddenly everything's okay you know it's undoing like you know t life a lifetime's worth of, of tv shows of 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 you know, seeing people in public and, you know, like, like growing up in a culture that tells you that you have to be one way and not another and that, you know, so I think we're still suffering from, from all of that. So I think in regards to anyway, in regards to this LGBT action plan, um, you know, I'm happy to see that it's been, you know, put out there. Um, but reading through it, I just feel like, especially this government, will just say whatever they like and actually I have yet to see the action sort of follow, you know, the follow up actions take place. What do you want out of the government? What, what are they not doing that you would like to see them doing? Well, I feel like their sort of pledges are a little bit weak in terms of, you know, I'd love to see a commitment to LGBT inclusive sex and relationship education across all schools, you know, and, and I think the government are saying that they're considering those proposals or they're putting things in place but you know and it, when it's age appropriate and it's like well when, who decides what's age appropriate is the government deciding that and how will they introduce that to schools you know I think we need to be as soon as possible you know telling kids that it's okay to be trans it's okay to be gay it's okay to be lesbian in primary schools you know what I mean like I think we need to be doing it as early as possible um, and, and as part of a broader kind of you know edu ed educational tool for all kids not just LGBT kids um, because you were bullied at school, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, I was. And you had a pretty tough time coming out. Yeah, well, so I, yeah. Does a lot of your anxiety about, for example, when you were saying, you know, you would still find it hard to hold hands with your partner in public, does it all stem back to that in a way? I think so. I think part of it does, yeah, because, you know, for a, when you're a gay, I mean, for me, when I was a gay kid at school, I knew that um, it wasn't safe to be out. Like, I didn't feel like it was safe to be out. There weren't, weren't any other out kids, and um, that you know, does plant this like seed of, you know, toxicity inside you that just kind of grows and grows. And um, I know we've come, you know, I was at school 10 years ago and I know we've come a really long way and the UK is a great place to be gay. I do believe that, but it doesn't mean that all LGBT kids at school are like thriving and, and feeling great all the time. They're, they're really not. Um, and What's this... your advice to them? Someone going through what you went through? Um... Which I guess was homophobic bullying really, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I also think, you know, I was very, I was quite feminine at school and I got bullied for not sort of fitting this, what, a, what a man should be. And so, well, I guess my advice would be that the things that, you know, if I was talking to an LGBT person who was going through this, I would say the things that you feel um, make you a target and make you a, a target for bullying and are actually the things about you that are beautiful and amazing and unique and are going to propel you to be the unique, strong, wonderful person that you are um, and to try and find your brothers and sisters within the community, you know, to try and talk about what you're going through, which is, which can be really hard for young people to find what that is, like, you know, but thankfully now, you know, we have 
online tools for that. Um, and I would just encourage like young kids to try and seek out um, support from either friends or from people they trust. Um, but it's it's not easy and it's a long process, you know. How long has it taken you to feel that you've come through that period in your life? I think it's I think it's ongoing, <laughs> um, but I you know I spent a long time wishing I wasn't gay, you know, like just wishing that I would do anything to have that just taken away and I could just be like everybody else. But now I don't feel like that, you know. I'm so thankful to be gay and I feel like God, I'm so happy I'm gay. Like I would not want to be straight, <laughs> um, and I feel you know much more confident with myself. But like but like you said, I still have these moments where I don't feel like it's okay to be myself out in public, you know, still, which is kind of sad, really. I mean, one of the things that the government survey says today is about how many people have been offered conversion therapy to cure them. I mean, 5% yeah. of those surveyed. Were you surprised it was so many? Um, I guess I was a bit surprised, but I think just because I think oh, conver con conversion therapy is something that should have really been banned a long time ago. But I think with this specific issue, it goes actually much deeper than because an actual conversion therapy with a therapist who's sort of promising to give you to like cure your sexuality or whatever um, is 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 one thing. But also, I believe that within kind of other organisations, schools, like religious groups, there is an, an, another form of conversion therapy going on, which is people trying to, you know, change somebody's sexuality. And I think that that's why it's going to be really hard to eradicate it across the board, if that makes sense, because it's part of a larger problem, I think. But um, yeah, I was surprised that that many people had, had experienced conversion therapy because... It's not something it, that you were ever offered or no, it wasn't. you ever came across. No, it wasn't. Um, it just makes me feel really, yeah, it makes me feel really sad and I get quite emotional when I think about it. Just because, you know, the, 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 the kind of damage that that would cut, that that gives, that that, that is going to put on put on anybody is just, like, irreparable, I think. It's, it's really shocking. How easy do you think it is for kids who are gay at school to access mental health services? Um, I don't think it's very easy. Um, I think across the board it's hard for people to access mental health services um, and I think a lot of young LGBT plus kids worry that you know if they do try and access support if they do go to their doctor or anything that, that their doctor isn't going to have isn't going to understand or they might even face some kind of like you know homophobic treatment or you know and those fears are like real you know and they're, and they're there for a reason because too often I think in my case as well like we've experienced you know healthcare professionals not knowing quite how to deal with a specific issue for a gay person and so uh, you know how do we sort of help that and make that situation better I think we need to like provide for healthcare professionals you know to, to, to be educated on what you know an LGBT kid might be going through um, but also those provisions need to be there in the first place I think we've seen like services cut year on year on year so that's why that's another reason why I think like well Theresa May is promising all this money for services but these services are going so it doesn't add up and you were you've always been open about your sexuality um, in your career but you were kind of advised that that might not be that sensible weren't you how difficult a decision was it to ignore that advice well I sort of like was thinking about it in my head like constantly until I just got asked the question in an interview you know like I think they said um, you know, they asked me, like, if I fancy this girl or something, and I was just like, no, I'm gay. <laughs> and it wasn't until that point where I realised I'd been holding on to, like, a lot of fear about that and how it was such a relief just to let it go and be like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to have this out there, you know, because the thought of trying to lie or evade those questions would just be... I just don't think I could have coped with that. Um, and now, I mean, in your music, you use a male pronoun, you sing about being in love with a man, you're quite open about it, but that is quite unusual in music still, isn't it? Uh, it is a bit unusual, I think, but you know, you have to remember that there aren't, there still aren't that many gay musicians out there making sort of, well, music that gets played on the radio, like, you know, and also if you think about a lot of those artists work with songwriters and we have a lot of gay songwriters, but they tend, we have a lot of ones that aren't. And so, you know, I'm not surprised that along the way the, the, the kind of pronouns get lost, um, but I, yeah, I've been quite adamant of like putting them in the songs and getting them, you know, 
getting them through, if that makes sense. Um, because, you know, what, I don't know, I grew up listening to songs with women speaking about men and I just thought, well, I want to do that too. Like, why shouldn't I do the same? A couple of years ago, you said you had a crush on Jeremy Corbyn. Is <laughs> that um, still a passion or has it faded? I mean, I do have a lot of love for Jeremy Corbyn. I also... Did you do the Jazz Fest? No, I didn't. <laughs> I guess like I've just been a little frustrated with like Labour generally and I support them, I, I vote for them um, but I just feel like I've kind of like stepped back a little bit. And Why I'm, frustrated? Um, I guess it was when everything fell apart with Brexit, <laughs> like everything has fallen apart and it feels like there's no one kind of really on mess, everyone just seems like they're fighting each other within the party and um, no, there's no real like clear message or... And you'd like uh, a more pro-European message would you? Or just yeah, a message? I think, I, think message. I mean, just a message would be good, just because I really would like to get the Tories out and I feel like Labour needs to come together, <laughs> um, you know, but I still support them, you know, so, yeah, fingers crossed. Ollie Alexander, thank you very much. Oh, thank you.